Sorry, I didn't understand. Yeah, yeah, it was it was recording for the assistant. Now it is a recording uh, in the uh, Zoom 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 recording. Uh, ah, now I can see you, Nikita. Shalom. Thanks. So, so this this is the first meeting of the new year. We are now making an inauguration of the new year, Rosh Hashanah, with the the, the first meeting of the year. Today is a special day, it's called Tzom Gedalia, it's a day of fast, so you're not supposed to drink and you're not supposed to eat, and I'm doing it a partial, I, I, I drank a, a little of uh, water, but I'm not, I, since I w woke up in the morning, I didn't eat, so I'm fasting, so uh, you forgive me if I'm not a hundred percent today, but I'm I'm fasting today. So I, I, last time I ate something, it was uh, yesterday night. Okay, so let's see the presentation. It is about the solid principles and solid principles illustrated by design patterns. Okay, so we'll talk about solid principles. That actually was a question of Nikita in the previous met, uh, previous talk, and then we'll talk about the design patterns. So this is a uh, my biography when I made this presentation. So you see, when I made this presentation, I was working at Pontis. Pontis was a company that uh, was acquired by Amdox. They made an exit of a hundred million dollars, and uh, I was the president of the. Israeli chapter of the International Association of Software Architects. Okay, and see, and here you see some of the previous companies I worked at then. So this was more or less uh, 10 years ago. So, so th this presentation is for more or less 10 years ago. Okay. So these are the solid principles of uh, object-oriented pro programming. So we have the single responsibility principle, the open closed, the least cost substitution, the interface segregation, and the dependency inversion. And we'll talk about each one of them, don't worry. So together they make the word solid. The person that promoted these principles is a very famous person called Uncle Bob. It's Robert Martin, so it's Uncle Bob. So he promoted it in his books of clean coding, but they were not invented by Uncle Bob. For instance, Liskov substitution principle was invented by Barbara Liskov, the woman and Jewish, and open closed principle was invented by a French Jewish uh, person called Bertrand Meyer, which in English they say Bertrand Meyer. So that's the pronunciation in English, Bertrand Meyer, but his name in French, in French is Bertrand Meyer. And he's also Jewish. So let's start with the, the first principle, which is the strategy. Uh, oh no, sorry. This, this is design pattern, wait. Will, will we use the strategy design pattern to illustrate the principles? Okay. So we'll see how in this design pattern, you can see all the principles, which is very nice. Okay, so how does the strategy design pattern work? You have some context that uses some strategy. This is composition. Okay. This diagram is called UML diagram. Is a unified modeling language, UML, unified modeling language. And each one of these boxes is a class. In the top, you have the name of the class. In the bottom, you have the, the interface. This arrow here is a composition arrow. So it means the context has a component that is a strategy. And this here in the bottom is inheritance. So the strategy in this example has two subclasses. This is a superclass that has two subclasses. And so this is a 
unified modeling language diagram with composition and inheritance. And it has one abstract class and two concrete class subclasses. And, and, the, and the, the strategy is a component of the context. So everywhere you use a strategy, you can use a concrete strategy of type A or type B. And this is called polymorphism, okay? The, the idea that you can use A or B and they are interchangeable, this is a polymorphism. And this connection that when you, you call the method of the strategy in runtime, you know, if you call the concrete A or the concrete B, this is a decision that is made in runtime. How is this called, this decision? Do you know? Who knows? Nobody no volunteer. So this is dynamic binding. Okay. So the, the fact that you have multiple forms for a, an object is polymorphism. And the in the the in the binding at runtime is called dynamic binding. So let's start with the first principle, the single responsibility principle. Here's the definition. Each class should have a single responsibility. Only one potential change in the system and specification should affect the implementation of the class. Okay, so if you see here in the strategy, the responsibility for the implementation of a concrete strategy is decoupled from the context that uses this strategy. So here is this very important concept of coupling. Coupling is kind of connection. So you only want low coupling. The opposite of coupling is cohesion. So we want low coupling and high cohesion. Cohesion is how the things inside the class are related to each other. Okay, so using this pattern, you decouple the context from the concrete strategy. It becomes like a plugin. Okay, any question? Then, oh, sorry, Chaim. Uh, what yes. do you consider by strategy a context? So strategy is uh, like abstract class, but constant context. What does it mean? The context is some model in the program that is using the strategy. The context is some class, some uh, component that is using the strategy. Maybe For instance, some example, who you provide? Yes, that? let's say the strategy is. Uh, I'll give you an example. Beautiful example. I will go to my blog. You go to my blog, and then uh, I will go to the set. So this is a, an article about set similarity metrics. How do I measure the similarity about uh, sets of objects? Mm -hmm. So there are several ways to do it. First, jacquard similarity. Jacquard similarity is the intersection divided by the union. Oh, union. Yeah, okay. okay, which is also this. It, it, this, this is equal to this. So this is the jacquard similarity between A and B, set A and set B. Then you have Sorensen coefficient. Sorensen coefficient is two times the intersection divided by the sum. Okay, so, so you have you have the you have this the number of elements in the intersection multiplied by two divided by the sum of the size of the two sets. So this is the Sorensen coefficient. Then you have the Tversky index. The, the Tversky index has two parameters, alpha and beta, that must be uh, equal to zero or greater than zero. 
So the Tversky inters is the intersection divided by the size of the intersection plus alpha multiplied by the difference plus beta as the difference between x and y plus beta times the difference between y and x. Okay. okay. So this is Tversky. And when alpha equal beta, this is equal to the Jacquard similarity. And when alpha, now this is when alpha equal beta equal one. When alpha equal beta equal one, you have this. Okay? It is Jacquard similarity. And when alpha equal beta equal half, you have uh, the Sorensen coefficient. And, uh, and you can make a different formula. And normally we want alpha plus beta equal one. Normally you want alpha plus beta equal one, which is a weighted average. Then you have the overlap coefficient. The overlap coefficient is the size to inter of the intersection divided by the minimum size of the two objects. Okay. Okay. Good. Great. Okay. So, he, so are these uh, strategies? Yes. Okay. So there's different there's different ways to measure set similarity are strategies. Okay. I may okay. Uh, if I have in my system. I have this problem that I need to measure the similarity of uh, two sets of objects. I can adopt these different ways to implement it. I will, I will send it in the group. I will send it in the group. Wait, and this is very, very interesting. This is uh, mathematics, right? This is data science, data, yeah. but this is mathematics. It's a set of theory. Okay, and uh, I wrote this in my blog when I wrote it in two thousand nineteen, so it is uh, more than five years ago. And I'll send it to you also, Nikita. No, no, no. I, I, I'm in, in your group. I could read from the uh, sense of... Uh, so I catch the idea behind the strategies, but my question was much more related to the context. So the context is, is any place in the system in which you need the strategy. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. it's a place in which you need the strategy. Okay. And this strategy is also related to a b testing okay it's also related to a b testing and this also related to buckets it's also related to buckets but uh let's continue if i have time in the end i will go back to this thanks so now it's quite clear okay thank you so so this is about the single responsibility. And then uh, you have um, the explanation and then open closed. So software entities should be open for extension and closed for modification. Okay. So this is was a principle that uh, Bertrand Meyer wrote when he invented the Eiffel programming language. And so there were there was a programming language called Eiffel, which in I mean in French is Eiffel, is the Tour Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower. Okay, so in in this example, the context is open for extension, but it's closed for modification. It does not need to be changed in order to use a new type of strategy. So let's say I have strategy A and B. And now someone implements strategy C. I can use strategy C in the context. Okay, so it's open for extension. Then list code substitution 
as I said, was Barbara Litskov. She says, as a woman, objects in a program should be replaceable with instances of their subtypes without altering the correctness of that program. This is very important. This, what Barbara Litskov is saying is that it's not sufficient that the interface is the same interface. What Barbara Liskov is saying is that behavior is the same behavior, okay? That is semantic. The semantic is the same semantic, not only the syntax. Because to make the syntax, the same syntax is very easy. What is difficult is to make the semantics the same semantics, okay? Any question? What do you mean semantic? Semantic. Semantic is the meaning. The meaning of what you do. Syntax. Syntax is how you write it. The way you write it is the syntax. And the way, but the meaning is the is this is this semantic. Okay. I'll okay. give you no, I'll give you an example. Yeah. I'll give you an example. I will give you an example. Wait. I write you in Hebrew. Before Yoshevet Al Yadi Makatufpo Sipor Yoshevet Al Yadi Mamaj Maud. Girl sitting on my oh, on her. On my hand. It's for ambiguity. It's for ambiguity. It's for ambiguity. It's for do much more. It's for do much more. It's for do much more. The Holy Ot, she's support. She ala yacheli. She ba ala yacheli is support. Vegam is betui alia di. She's a batsacheli or batsadiamin or batsad small. Okay. אז יש פה אמביגוויטי, יש דו משמעות. אז על ידי... זה סימן דבר כאילו. לא, הסינטקס, אותו סינטקס. סינטקס והסמנטיקה שונה. הסמנטיקה שונה. אוקיי. אוקיי? אז אתה יכול להגיד, מה כתוב פה? דוד שמש. מה כתוב פה? דוד שמש. דוד שמש, נכון? יכול להיות שיש משפחת שמש. משפחת שמש. יש אחד שקוראים לו דוד, נכון? כן, אחלה, תודה. בעברית יש אין סוף כאלה. יש אין סוף... אתה יכול להמציא בעברית מאות דוגמאות כאלה. זה קל מאוד לעשות את זה בעברית כי אין ניקוד. בעברית אין ניקוד. אז זה קל מאוד לעשות את זה. אוקיי. אלה שלומדים עברית, הבינו? פולה הבינה. כן, אני חושבת אם אני יכולה ללמד בעברית, אני יכולה לקרוא משהו כזה. בסדר, אני לא יודע מה רמת העברית שלך, סליחה. סליחה, אני לא יודע מה רמת העברית שלך. באיזה רמה את? באיזה כיתה את? אני לא לומדת, אני הייתי מברית לפני שאני עליתי, ואם אני חושבת שיכולה ללמד במשרד החינוך, אני יכולה להסתדר עם משהו כזה, באמת. בסדר, תודה רבה לה. אוג'ין, מה המצב שלך? אני לא מדבר עברית, אז 
Anilome Vin. I, I don't understand any words uh, except Nahon, except something else. But uh, when I listen uh, uh, languages I don't understand, it's like music. So I enjoy. Okay. What about you, Nikita? Do you understand these examples? No, not at all. Okay. So, so Paula is an exception. Can, Paula, Paula is a person who made Aliyah when she read a new Hebrew. Oh. Right, Paula? Something like this. Yeah, so, so you are exceptional. Ehomrim, exceptional in Hebrew? You said often. דופן? אתם יודעים מה זה יוצא דופן? ילד, ילד, תינוק שנולד בניתוח קיסרי נקרא יוצא דופן. אוקיי? אז הרגן The reason of the expression Yotze Dofen are babies that were born in Caesarian birth. Paula, did you know that? No, it's something new. Okay, so let's continue. Let's continue. Okay, so this is about uh, this is about uh, semantic and uh, syntax. Then dependency inversion says that the high level models should not depend on the low level ones, but should depend on abstractions. And the abstraction should not depend on details. Details should depend on abstractions. Okay, so here you have The context and the concrete strategies depend on an abstract interface and they are not coupled to each other. Okay, so there is decoupling. There is not a direct connection between the context and the strategy, the concrete strategy. It's decoupling. Okay, it's indirect connection. Now let's talk about the visitor design pattern. It, it looks uh, frightening. So There is a visitor that has an interface. The visitor knows how to, to visit the elements. He knows how to visit element A and element B. And he receives as a parameter the concrete element A and the concrete element B. And then there is a concrete visitor and another concrete visitor that implement these methods. And then the element has a concrete element A and a concrete element B that accepts the visitor. And when the ele element accepts the visitor, he says, visitor, visit myself. You understand this? This is very difficult to understand if you see this for the first time. Wait, wait, wait. Is, is what? Wait, wait. Yes, yes, like an iterator. See, here you see the sequence diagram. The, the, client, the client creates the visitor. This is the first thing. The, cli the client creates the visitor. Then, then the, client, the client creates the first element and the second element. Okay, so there is three objects. There is the visitor, the first element and the second element, three objects. This is a sequence diagram. This is another diagram on the unified modeling language. So this, this diagram here, this is a class diagram. 
Okay, this is a class diagram. This also is a class diagram in which you have inheritance, but this is a sequence diagram. So the client creates three objects, one visitor and two elements. And then he says to the, to the first element, accept the visitor, accept the visitor. And then the element says to, says to the visitor, visit myself, visit myself. And then it calls the function visit of element one. Then the, the client says to the element two, accept the visitor. And then the element two says to the visitor, visit myself. And then again, it's called the visitor, but a different function. It's visit of element two. Okay, it's not the same function are different functions. It visit concrete element A and visit concrete element B. You see, different functions. What do you think about that? Is it good or bad? And why? It's useful to save memory. Yes, it is, uh, it is uh, useful that you, do, you don't need to remember the type of the element. You don't need to remember the type of the element. The element knows its type and the element knows which method should be called. So this is this is useful. But does it follow the solid principles? What do you think? I think no, because uh, uh, this is one action, visit element. We have two implementation. Yes, there is no dynamic binding. There is no polymorphism. See what happens. The visitor violates the single responsibility principle. So the visitor must know all the elements. Each visitor must know all the elements. You see? Each visitor must know all the elements. This visitor knows elements A and B, and this visitor knows elements A and B. So each visitor must know all the elements, okay? And then, and then what happens? If I add a new type of element, I, in the hierarchy of elements, I add a new type of element, I must change all the visitors. I break everything. See, because I need to add now. If I add if I add element C, I need to change the interface, and I need to change this, and I change this. So I need to change everything. So every time I add a new type of element, I need to break everything. This is very bad. And the only I way to to fix it is to use something called double dispatch. Double dispatch. I don't know a single programming language that has double dispatch. It is a conceptual idea. Double dispatch. It is dynamic binding on both type of visitor and element. So you have a matrix. Depending on the type of the visitor and the type of the element, you choose the method, okay? It doesn't exist in C++. It doesn't exist in Java. It doesn't exist in JavaScript. It doesn't exist in Python. It doesn't exist in, in uh, Eiffel. It doesn't exist in Smalltalk. Okay, it doesn't exist. This is double dispatch. So in the single dispatch, which is dynamic binding, okay, each visitor, must have a different method for each and, and element. So for element one, I have this method. For element two, I have this method. And for the element three, I have this method. So in total, I have nine methods. See, in this matrix, in this matrix, I, I, I don't need so many methods, but uh, here I, I, I need uh, nine methods. Now, let's talk about singleton. 
Okay, let's talk about the singleton. The singleton is a very famous design partner. The singleton is an object that there is once one of his kind. There are not two, there are only one. And this is a typical implementation of singleton. Okay. It has an instance, which is a private and static. So it is class instance. Okay, it's a class variable, it's a class variable. The constructor is private. So you cannot create new instances because the constructor is private. And there is a single static method called get instance that returns the instance. And of course, there are the, the other methods that uh, the, the things the, the instance know how to do. Okay, this is a typical implementation of the singleton design pattern. Now, it violates all the solid principles. Okay, I'll say it again. The, the singleton design pattern violates all the solid principles. And I will explain you one by one. Okay, see, see here, see here what's happened in the in the system. You have a sequence of methods. Each method needs to call the singleton object. Okay, each method needs to call the singleton object. So, the first way to fix it is to pass the singleton object as a parameter. So instead of everybody knowing him, you pass it as a parameter. Okay. So this method, the first method, has the responsibility to instantiate it, and then it is passed as a parameter, not global variable, because this is global variable. Okay. This is a global variable. Okay. Now you, you have one instantiation and then pass it as a parameter. Now, I create an interface for the singleton. I separate the interface from the singleton. So I fix it, the interface aggregation and the dependency injection, okay? So instead of passing as a parameter the singleton, I pass as a parameter the interface of the singleton. You see the difference? I don't pass S, I pass I. Now I can have two different implementations of the singleton class. I have I can have two different implementations. So now I have Liskov. I have Liskov substitution principle. And now I have a selector. I use a selector to choose to choose the instance I want. And then I have decoupling. I have decoupling. And then I have open close principle. You see the evolution? Let's start. Let's do it from the beginning. I have, this is the initial typical usage of the single object, singleton object, which is a global variable. We start with a global variable. Then we pass it as a parameter. Then we separate the interface from the implementation. Then we create several possible implementations. Then we create a selector. And now it's solid. This is solid. But what's this? What's the name of this? Do you have a name for this? This is called the factory design pattern. Okay? This is the factory design pattern. So you have an abstract factory and you have concrete factories and you have abstract products and, and each abstract product can have several concrete products. So what we did here is to transform the singleton into a factory. So this is a metamorphosis. I applied the solid principles and we moved from the singleton, ob 
pattern to the factory design pattern. So the single tone actually is a degenerate kind of factory that always returns the same object of the same type. And in the, in the, in the single tone, the interface of the factory, which is the get instance, is mixed with the interface of the object itself. So this is extremely corrupt, extremely corrupt. Okay. So you need to continue studying about the factory design pattern. You need to continue studying about the singleton design pattern. You need to continue studying about the visitor design pattern and the strategy design pattern, okay? And the solid principles. Now, this is just introduction. What I gave you now is just an introduction, okay? This is just an introduction, short introduction for you to decide that you need to learn it because this is very interesting and very useful. And uh, the conclusions are that to understand how to apply the solid principles, you can choose a design pattern. You can analyze how this pattern makes use of the solid principles. And you must remember that some patterns may violate some of the principles, okay? Remember that. Some, some design patterns violate, violate the solid principles. That's it. Now, now I have bonus. Nikita, do you have any question? No, 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 thank you. It's quite clear. Okay. So let's, let me try to find uh, another presentation. Anyone has any question? I'm searching for something. Yes, I found it. I'm so happy. So now you get a bonus. You get a bonus about the architecture for machine learning. This one. So this is from nine years ago. Okay, this presentation is from 19 years ago. It's when I, I worked at Pontis. This is about platform architecture. I have to skip lots of things here. Um, these are the goals. We have subscriber buckets, online performance evaluation, exploration, experimentation, exploitation, adaptiveness. Uh, so beautiful. Nikita, do you like it? I find pretty cool. Yeah. Why, uh, uh, that all the possible features are here. What about you, Dennis? Do you like it? Yes. Okay. I will just go make a short overview. So, in the in the platform, you have a set of subscribers. What are subscribers? Are the users that are assigned to some bucket. And the bucket uses a model, and the model and this users assigned to the bucket with the model have online metrics. Do you understand this concept of the bucket? Okay, we can divide the users, for instance, Tel Aviv goes to one bucket, 
Haifa goes to another bucket. Okay, so we have Tel Aviv and Haifa. This is one example. And I will skip this. So here you see the online monitor. You have the buckets, you have the percentage of subscribers. In total, 100%. You have the model that is being used, and you have the online performance. Okay, so each bucket has a model. There is the main bucket, which has 70% of the subscribers. That is an exploration bucket in which I'm, I'm testing a model. And I have five different exploitation buckets in this example. And each, each exploitation bucket gets 5% of the subscribers. Nikita, Nikita thinks it's too much. Sorry, I think about multiple comparisons. So some home corrections yeah. or Benferoni corrections don't take to you. This is to measure online performance. This is to measure online performance. Okay. Experiment one is the control group. Experiment one is the control group is the same model as the main model. You see? The same model, control group. And here you have four experiments. I will skip the text. Then you have here. Facts, facts are the events in the database. You have a script to compute the matrix, generates online matrix, and then there is a metric comparison script. Now this is for online performance, performance evaluation. So you have a bucket name, percentage of subscribers, okay? And then I migrate to this dynamic configuration. Okay, so, so this is on the left side. All the users are using the same model. And then here I have several models. When do I make this migration? When I have enough data. So I start, when I start the system, Everything is exploration. When I have enough data, I move to experimentation. Okay, and there are and there are and there are uh, several possible uh, situations. I'm not to discuss everything. This is one interesting this scenario. You see. This experiment four had performance 75, which is better than the main bucket. The main bucket was 73. So I did an upgrade. So model D became the main and model A was forgotten. You see, this is model upgrade, promotion of a model real time, dynamically, automatically, without human intervention. Without human intervention, I can promote my model to be the main model. Adaptable. And I can, I can, and I can take a model that is underperforming, like model B, his performance, his performance is not good enough. And I have here in the database, I have a model that has a good potential. What is potential? Potential is offline performance. So this performance here is online performance, is a real world performance. And here in the database, I have offline performance. So I chose this model and I promote it. And now I have a question mark because I don't have history yet. And I can have a dashboard. And this is about, this is about 
creating an adaptable platform with several machine learning models that are automatically promoted. Any question? Do you know how many companies have this? Very few. How can you measure online performance? With offline, it's clear. You can, you have the like questions and answers. You have the tags for classes, for example. How can you measure online performance? So online performance, it depends on the domain. Okay. Everything depends on the domain. So for example, if you are advertising platform, you have CTR, which is a click, click through rate. It's an online metric. You have the conversion rate. Conversion rate is an online metric. You have the ROAS, return on ad spend, is an online metric. Okay, so in, in this domain of advertising, I gave you three examples of online metrics. The click-through rate, the uh, conversion rate, and the return on ad spend. You want understood, more? Understood. Uh, understood. Yeah, so is this not I, I give you, I give you, I give you another another domain, another domain, e-commerce. So e-commerce, you have conversion rate. Okay, it's the, it's the most important metric on e-commerce and e-commerce conversion rate, but you can also have the upsell rate, and you can have the uh, bounce rate. Bounce rate, people who come to the page and leave immediately. So bounce rate is another online metric for e-commerce. For any system, you can have uh, you have you can have a lifetime average lifetime, and you can have the I forgot the name. The users that leave the system is uh, how do you say it? This friction, there's a, how do you say, a, 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 Nikita, I forgot. The, the users that, that leave the system, is a, I forgot. Uh, the, churn, churn. Huh? Churn. Churn rate. So churn rate. I, I, I could uh, add something to your answer. And um, yes. terminology, there is an issue. So offline metrics, when we say offline means we consider data science metrics, like Rockaook, Gini, yes, yes, Quanspo, serendipity and so on but when we call online metrics it's not about data science metrics when we need some target or observations this is a product metrics and the correlation between data science metrics or offline metrics and uh, product metrics like online metrics we could only derive from a series of a b testing it's a common problem in recommendation systems and so on usually um no very often you have uh, targets uh very fine time uh from from your uh runtime so you and you could collect them them so you instead use only product metrics and revenue or ctr or churn and so on yes thank you nikita and this is accentuated because the models learn from the past Okay, so this this is uh, the the learn machine learning pipeline. Okay, the models learn from the past, but sometimes the present is different from the past, and very often the future is different from the past, especially today. Uh, let me see if there is something here. Especially today, we live in a time of discontinuity. So very often, the future is different from the past. For example, the war in Israel. The war in Israel is a moment of discontinuity. Which business in Israel is making lots of money during the war? 
can you give me an example? Which business is making lots of money because of the war? Insurance. What? Insurance? Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps insurance. Mm -hmm. But uh, supermarket. People are buying from the supermarket more than they need because they are making stock. Everybody has a stock at home. I have enough food for two weeks. I have enough water for one month. Okay, so, so supermarket for one year already are selling lots of everything. But if you, if you try to use this data to predict the future, you have a surprise. Because when the war ends, what will happen when the war ends? People will start consuming all the stock. So they will start eating all the tuna fish. They will start using all the toilet paper. They will start, they will start drinking all the mineral water. That, that's what is going to happen. As soon as the war finish, people will start consuming their stock. And then supermarket will have surprise. Why, why am I not selling, why am I not selling uh, toilet paper? Why people are not buying toilet paper? Surprise. See, I'll tell you a real story. In, in Brazil, I lived in Rio de Janeiro. I lived in Rio de Janeiro. And all the Jews in Rio de Janeiro had summer house in a, a small village called Teresópolis. It was a small village for the Jewish community. We called it Eretzópolis. Eretzópolis, because there were so many Jews. But the business there was business of uh, non-Jewish people, because the Jews went there for vacations. And during the rest of the year, there were the non-Jews that were there doing business. So, so there was a bakery. There was a big bakery that they saw all the people coming to Teresópolis, all the Jewish community from Rio de Janeiro, thousands of people. I'm talking about thousands of people who moved from Rio de Janeiro to Teresópolis for vacations. So the owner of the bakery was very happy. What did she do? We saw all, this, all these vehicles, all these cars entering the city, the small city. What did the owner of the bakery do? Expand. Raise the prices. No, he made lots of bread. He saw so many people. He said he made lots of bread, lots of bread. He, he made three times the normal quantity of bread. What happened? Nobody purchased the bread. And then I was cross, I was passing in front of the bakery with my father and he took my father. I was a teenager, I was a boy. He took my father from the arm and he says, like a crazy person. Why you don't purchase my bread? Why? What's happening? Why you don't purchase my bread? It was a goy. It was a, it was not non-Jewish person. And my father looked at him and said, Pesach, it's Passover. It's the vacation. We are, we have a vacation because it's Passover. We don't eat bread. A great story. It's a real story. It's a real story. Okay. So let's finish. Let's finish the, the presentation. You got a bonus about uh, set similarity matrix. You got a bonus about how to build an adaptable platform with machine learning models. We'll talk more about that in another opportunity, especially Dennis. I will talk about that with the margin team, which is the data science team. And uh, I wish you again a happy new year, and uh, and that uh, uh, you have good news. Besarot of what? So, uh, Chaim, can you please uh, share with me links because I'm not in the WeChat. chat. Oh yes, I forgot to share with you. I will share with you also. Thank okay, you. Th thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Okay, so be safe.
be safe and uh, don't watch uh, too much news. It's not good uh, to watch uh, too much news. I don't watch news. Uh, I know about my family. I know about my friends. I know about you. That's uh, the most important for me. And I don't care about uh, about uh, what uh, what uh, the politicians are saying. You know, I don't care about what the politicians think. And if I don't care about what they think, I certainly don't care about what they say, because they don't they don't even say what they think. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. This thank you, Karim, for your presentation. Thank, thank you, Dashanatova. Thank you, thank you, Karim. Thank you, Dashanatova. Bye bye.